Outback Australia is a balance of harsh terrains and wild weather. Travelling through these regions can be tough at times, but eking out a living here brings a whole new level of challenge. Life out here is unforgiving and nothing grows without water. is totally washed away and it's going to be a fair while before that's possible. The road to Menindee is absolutely decimated. It's amazing how full the lakes have actually got. From white dunes yesterday to red dunes today, absolutely amazing. These are true Aussie conditions, where else would you want to be? And we asked Simon to do us a favour and see if there's any sheep on Tickle Island. Ah! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, Uncle Mike here from Clearview. We're away with Simon again and we've come up to Mildura. So looking forward to the next seven or eight days. We're heading up through Poonkari, up towards Menindi. Go and check out some of the flood affected areas up there, which will be really interesting. I'm up from Melbourne. This time I've brought James along for a trip again. He starts his apprenticeship Monday morning, so he's up for a couple of days. Probably his last trip for a while, so welcome to working life, James. The start of the trip, we all met at the Track 4x4 store in Mildura there. A big adventure starts with a big breakfast, and fortunately, Brad from Monaghan Truck and Trailer Supplies, Trek Hardware 4x4 Superstore Mildura, has put it on for us. So let's go and get started. Cameron. Mike. Mike, Cameron, how are you, mate? Nice to meet you. Good. Help yourself, mate. Rip your look. Yeah, Cameron, how are you, mate? My name's Anthony from Narva. First time on your 4x4 trip, and I'm super pumped to be here. Hey, I'm Lahiru from Narva. Excited to be on your 4x4 with Simon Christie. It's the first time on the show. So the whole crew this morning were fortunate enough to be served up a helping of McMonaghan muffins, our homegrown specialty. They all got snapped up really quick. Yeah, it was good to see a, a few new faces in there and also some friendly faces such as Charlie from Mike Coleman. Hi guys, I'm Charlie again here with the Mike Coleman Prado. Um, I know a lot of guys have come from all over the place. I've come up from Melbourne and Gippsland and Queensland and all over the place, so it was great to get the whole group together. We headed north from Brad's at Trek Hardware to head towards Poon Kerry. We did 40 k's on the Wombera Road before hitting the bitumen. The weather was very dry. You could see all the heat waves across the road. Long bitumen roads, heaps of dust flicking around. You can almost picture the tumbleweeds rolling across the road. That's the sort of scenery. Beautiful scenery on the way. You know, nice roads, reasonable condition. What a beautiful sight that was to see as well. Absolutely amazing out here. We took one of the more scenic routes, went along the dirt sections before we hit the small section of tar. A little bit rough, so we did have to air down midway. That took a fair bit out of the trip and, and made it a little bit quicker for us to get up towards Poon Kerry. Nice sunny day, it's 24 degrees. Wow! Did you can just see the top of the trees! Jeez, there's so much water. There's lakes either side. I just can't get over how much water there is. It's right up to the side of the road over here. Quite a lot wetter. Everything was green. A massively different country than last time I was up here. So we're going from bitumen to dirt roads and it's just incredible. There was a fair few roadworks happening as well along that way. Considering the water issues and the importance of our production, both the Wentworth and Central Darling Shires have granted us access, so we have sought the correct permission. We are doing it all legitimately, and we're looking forward to a ripper week up here in Tolano. Simon's done a lot of work with the local councils to get us permission to get onto these roads. So we can showcase exactly what's happening up here and some of the problems that are being caused and some of the frustration that the locals are dealing with. 
after we passed that sign, it became really evident why the road was closed. There were several places where the floodwaters had come right up to the road's edge and you could even see evidence of where it had been all the way over the road. There was just water everywhere, as far as the eye could see. We're looking forward to a massive week and it's great to have all of you along for the ride. The further north we went from Mildura, the more you could see how much the floods have impacted southwestern New South Wales and especially this region here. Really didn't expect the floods to be this bad out here, but they were absolutely crazy. It just slowly got worse and worse and the water on the side of the roads got worse and worse. Also the strawberry and the, and the terrain got greener, just for, everything's nice and lush at the moment. Really has highlighted how bad it is and how close the water's coming to the roads and affect the major properties around here. The water from the beautiful Darling River actually bursting its banks and letting it all flow over into the floodplains and re-nourishing the landscape. Jeff, we're north of Pooncary, we're on our way to Tolano. Who's going to catch a fish first? I always back myself. I usually lose, but I do back myself. <laughs> Ruben, I've been making this TV show for 15, 16 years, and as far as I can remember, we have never, ever caught a decent fish on camera. But do you reckon you are going to be the one to change that? It won't be me. I've brought my little secret weapon, little Aiden. What do you reckon, Aiden? I reckon I'll be catching all the fish. Everybody in the convoy keeps talking about going fishing. Look, we're not much of a fisherman. I'm sure if uh, salmon's actually native to these waters out here, but we've got two in the freezer and we might actually pretend we've caught those. I think that's what we're going to have to do. On the road in a few places we did come across road crews that were out doing their best to fix up the flood damage. The roadworks were right on top of it. They've got big machinery out there with the graders and the scrapers and the water trucks and a couple of guys on rollers already repairing the road so that they can open them as soon as they can, which is really good to see. Quite proactive on the council's half. They really made things happen, trying to get all the roads and everything back together again. Nothing better than a proactive council. Indicator's on and we here at Tolano. I'm very excited. The water looks amazing. It is just huge. From one end to the other end, I believe it's around 180 k's. Come over, everyone. Come over. How you doing? Rob met us, beer in hand. Very excited to give us a tour of this beautiful property. Please ask as many questions as you possibly can. I'm the owner of Tolano Station, and I'm very proud of the 500,000 acres. Very passionate man on the Darling Barker. He's trying to save it, trying to stop the water theft. It's the most amazing river system that we have in Australia, I believe. Basically go through deserts, and then right in the middle, you put the Benindi Lakes. Four times bigger than Sydney Harbour, in the middle of nowhere. Really is such a shame to see this river getting used and abused, as he said. In the last 10 years, we've been fighting very hard to keep water in the river. The Murray's highly regulated. Here, that wasn't the case. So all we want, as much as you take, you pay for, this river comes first. It was awesome to get a bit of a breakdown in history lesson from Rob. There was about 450 people living here at Tolano Station. We ran 338,000 sheep. It really surprised me the size of the homestead and some of the infrastructure around that. The boards on the property were logs. They fitted into the walls. It's just fabulous to see some of this stuff is still about instead of dozed and a brand new block building. It was a closed system. You could never get out of Tolano. They were travelling in a year like this, which is one in a hundred years. It couldn't have been better for them. Took us through the old blacksmiths. If you're up to 65, 70 degrees, this would have been a hell to be in. Unbelievable place. That was amazing. Everything they had to make themselves, right down to the shearers' combs. This saddlery came from Tolano, 1930s. It was very interesting. They made everybody very welcome. Really nice people. If you get a chance to come up here, come and say hello. <laughs> the wealth of Australia came in through the wool industry. It was that important. Nowadays we pretty well set up, we got our four wheel drives, got our fridges and 12 volt systems. Life's a lot easier for us, but it gave us a good insight to what it was like for the drivers back in the 1800s. It's amazing to see the impact of these floods. Previous trip up this neck of the woods, there was no water whatsoever. Couldn't even see where the river was. Two years ago, we all went over the levee, camped down by the riverbed. This time the water was as far as you could see. Under the trees, there's just no way. The river must have risen the eight to 10 meters from what it was back then. 
unfortunately couldn't use the same camp spot that had been used last time. We headed off about 500 metres down from the station. We found this camp that's just nice and flat. Right next to the river here, which is really awesome. A nice campground, lots of flies though. Oh, just got bitten by something, sorry. It's been a great opportunity to catch up with everyone and enjoy the beautiful water and a couple of cold beers. The water just brings life, not just for birds and duck, for fish and crustaceans. I caught a fish! I won. I beat Jeff, I need to show him my catch. I'm hoping for something bigger tomorrow. It's not worth it. I'd been down here a couple of days beforehand, thrown some yabby pots in. I bought a nice big bag of yabbies for the crew and they disappeared very fast. Hoping to finally get a fish. Grant's already down and got a head start on me. I've got my rod ready in the background, so as soon as I finish, I'm over there. Setting up and packing up the Austrack Campers Kitchen fits in perfectly with my cooking style. Now tonight, we've got a veggie patty for our vegetarian, sweet potato fries, some arancini, some fish fillets. We've got plenty of space on the Austrack Kitchen. Give me about 10 minutes, we'll get this cooked and all ready to go. I hope they enjoy it. So I've woken up here day two. We've made it day one, we've survived. Now Simon's turned up, he's gonna give us a bit of a debrief of what's happening today and I'm super excited because Rob is actually gonna give us a bit of a tour of his property. My name's Rob Maxwell. They call me the caretaker. I look after the house here. I've been here for a bit over six months now. It's been quite an eventful time. Flood, which has been quite dramatic for Talano. It is a pleasure to welcome Four Wheel Drive TV to Talano Station. I'm hoping to take them up the road to see the extent of the flood. But today is the big day that we go out and check out what the floods have done to this property. So you think the devastation is quite severe, but the reality is that these are flooded plains. By definition, they're supposed to flood. So it's a fantastic opportunity for the land to regenerate. It helps the environment, it helps the earth, it helps the flora, the fauna. Everything is thriving out here. It's lush, it's green, it's beautiful. And we are so lucky to be here at this time of year. So hopefully we're in for a good day of forward driving and good exploring. Wouldn't mind seeing someone get stuck. Forecasting a bit of mud today putting my bets on that the Nava boys are gonna get bogged first. Not even five kilometers down the road and we've already had some drama. The camera crew got stuck. It was pretty funny. A few of the guys in the convoy had bets on us being the first ones bogged, but thank God it wasn't us. <laughs> camera crew's deflating. Everything looking like it's all back on track again with them backing out. And of course, our camera crew car driver, he's just turned left straight into some deeper, muddier bog. Don't go there. <laughs> they did a pretty good job of initially getting themselves out until it got a lot worse, at which point Simon had to turn up and give them a bit of a hand to recover their vehicle. Simon being Simon, legged it, had to go around the water, come up, bog to its eyeballs. A little bit of excitement and a bit of fun in the morning. We had to winch him out. Real highlight, can't travel alone up here or take risks on where you're driving. If you're lucky enough, we're in a convoy, we've got plenty of people around with plenty of gears to sort the situation out. It was great for us. Gives us ammunition to give the guys a hard time. It's amazing, every trip we go on, there's always a popcorn moment with the camera crew. Especially this guy, he's hopeless. <laughs> Gonna enjoy the next six or seven days, giving him heaps. Well, that was a little bit of fun. Camera crew, always the first ones to get bogged. We headed a bit further north, and then we took a quick detour to a lookout place. It was a big flood plain, water everywhere. But we were at least five kilometers from the main channel of the Darling River. It just shows you how far the water has moved in from the main channel. They're talking in numbers of thousand megalitres of water, which is a ridiculous amount. Rob, our guide is very knowledgeable on this area. He gave us a quick rundown. 
we all certainly learned a fair bit from Rob. The area, but the floods, it creates wetlands and billabongs and that in there. So uh, it's just an amazing event for the countryside, especially compared to the drought four years ago, yeah. yeah. We thought possibly they were going to be bigger than 1976, but they didn't quite reach that peak. I feel that they were very a beneficial flood. As far as the station goes, there wasn't any damage to any of the buildings. I think it's just going to be a tremendous benefit going through into 2023 for the environment and for the management of stock on the Tolano station. Like a complete rejuvenation and it's been, it's been great to be here, to be a part of that. We're looking forward to a pretty good season. After that we headed north towards Menindee. <laughs> Holy smokes! Absolutely blown away with how much water is around. As the convoy continues their adventure through Tolano Station, we explore the flooded destruction, traverse muddy floodplains, and tour the haunted Tolano homestead, next week on your 4x4.